So you consider moving to St. Petersburg, Florida? Well, don't unless you can handle the things that we're gonna be talking about today. In this video, we're gonna share all the things you'll wanna know before moving to St. Pete and even cover the things that no one wants to talk about. You know, the things you can't find on Google. Things like, is St. Pete safe? Is the city flood prone? What's the cost of living in St. Pete? How bad's the traffic? and all the other things that come along with living in the Sunshine City. The weather, bugs, wildlife, and housing options. By the end of this video, you'll get to know St. Pete pretty well and hopefully gain the insights you need before making the final decision to call St. Petersburg, Florida your home. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. A little over five years ago, my wife Kate and I sold almost everything we own, packed up our family of five, moved 1,200 miles south to the greater Tampa Bay area, and have been loving it ever since. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group, where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. All of my contact information is down below. So I know everybody loves to start these videos out with all the great things about an area, but today we're gonna start this video by talking about the things that you probably won't love about living here in the area. So let's start with the first annoying thing that probably isn't a secret anymore, but traffic in the greater Tampa Bay area has become a nuisance to say the least. Annoying would be a very diplomatic term that I would use. Now, when it comes to St. Petersburg, Florida, the city's not small. In terms of geography, it takes up roughly 25-30% of Pinellas County um, where it is located. Now, if you've never been to St. Pete before, you've, you know, the greater Tampa Bay area, people for years have referred to it as Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete, the triangle, if you will, but it's really much larger than that. You know, it goes all the way up to Pasco County and all the way down to, you know, as far as south as Sarasota County, depending on who you talk to. When it comes to St. Pete, this is not a small city. There are roughly 260,000 residents in St. Petersburg, Florida, and it's continuing to grow. And as you can imagine, that puts a lot of stress on the road system. So just be aware of that. Now, traffic downtown is pretty manageable. There's great parking, there's parking structures, there's paid parking on the road. Park Mobile app is one of my favorite tools. When you come here, absolutely get that app. It'll make your life so much simpler. However, when it comes to Central Avenue, which is the main thoroughfare when it comes to St. Petersburg, it moves slow. The, the, the traffic limit, speed limit there is 25 miles an hour. And that is where a majority of our commerce takes place. You've got bars, bars, restaurants, boutiques, all the things that you need, which is wonderful. But it's a one-way road, and there's parking on the street, which is really cool, but people are constantly pulling in and out, and it slows traffic down. There's also a lot of visitors who are in St. Petersburg, Florida. So that part of traffic, it just moves a little bit slower. Now, here's what I'll say. It's not like bumper-to-bumper -bumper gridlock there. It flows pretty well because it's a one-way, and you've got you know a lot of streets to choose from, but that is something to be aware of. Now, where traffic is not cool is coming in and out of the city, right? St. Petersburg is right on the bay, and 275, which is the major highway that comes in and out of the bay that takes you down to Sarasota or takes you over to Tampa, that highway can get very congested. Saturdays and Sundays, you can get out on that highway and it's basically a parking lot. It can take time to get through. Now, I live 12 miles away and it takes me about 35 minutes on average to get to St. Pete. It's taken me as long as 45 minutes before um, because there was an accident or something was happening on, on that. But once you learn how to navigate the city, you can get in and out fairly easily. So keep that in mind. If you do not have to drive, if you're going to live in downtown St. Pete, then this is probably not going to be a problem for you anyways. It is very walkable. There's bikes and scooters that you can rent. Of course, there's Uber. If I lived in downtown St. Pete and I worked remote, I wouldn't own a car. There's no need to unless you want to go other places. And honestly, I would probably just Uber because of the expense. It probably just makes sense to do that. So when it comes to traffic, just know getting in and out of the city can be definitely more challenging than navigating the city itself. But there are peak drive times when you're going to experience traffic just like any other city in America. All right, now when it comes to weather, this is a little bit tricky because St. Petersburg, Florida is known as the Sunshine City. Literally, that's its name. So clearly, there is a lot to love. If you are a sun worshiper, you are gonna be in the right place. You're gonna be able to get a tan. It is absolutely beautiful with over 235 days of sunshine every single year. You can count on it, put it in the bank, it is coming. That is awesome, right? We've got great mild winters. You know, uh, our winter temperatures in January and February on a daily, they're, they're in this low 60s um, to, to low 70s, which is awesome. It can get a little bit cool at night, but our winters are unbelievable. Now, 
When it comes to those summer months, this is where things really start to change. And um, if you've never lived through a Gulf Coast summer before, let me just tell you, it is going to be an adjustment. From July through September, our average temperatures are 90 plus degrees. Now, since I've lived here, the five and a half years I've been here, we've never hit 100. And from what I can find online, the greater Tampa Bay area, actually, we've never seen a 100 degree temperature. Now, somebody else can prove me wrong, put it down in the comments, happy to have that conversation. However, 90 plus is very consistent. That, you know, low 90 to 95, July, August, September, that is real. That is also what is referred to as our rainy season. It can literally rain every day. And um, it's a short period of time, but it usually rains somewhere in the, in the afternoon. Now, w does it actually rain every day? No, but could it? Yes. And that is the, the Earth's way of cooling itself down and it is actually very welcome by that time of day, three to five o'clock. You're kind of over just that intense heat and you're ready for it to cool down. And, you know, the humidity builds and it will rain, which is a good thing. Now, hurricanes. This is something that people are always talking about and it's important to know because, um, St. Pete has not had to deal with a direct hurricane um, shot, if you will, um, since 1921. That is quite some time. Um, and the greater Tampa Bay area has been very blessed. Tampa itself has not had a hurricane, a direct hurricane strike in 105 years. Knock on wood. Um, that is unbelievable. And there is a lot of folklore and a lot of <laughs> tales, if you will, but people love to uh, claim that it's because of the Indians that were here and the sacred burial grounds. And I think that's really cool. I don't know that that's why, but I, you know, hey, I'll, I'll take it if we're not having hurricanes. But the thing you do need to be aware of is that St. Pete has a lot of areas that are prone to flooding, okay? Is the whole city gonna flood? No. But are there a lot of areas that are prone to flooding? Yes, especially when you get closer to the coast. St. Pete is very low, okay? And the neighborhoods are at sea level just above. So you gotta keep this in perspective when you're considering buying a home or you know renting a place or whatever because you need to look at the flood map. You need to look at the hurricane evacuation zones. Those will give you insights as to where these areas are pr uh, prone to flooding. There's areas like Snell Island, uh, Shore Acres, you know, we just had Hurricane Adalia come through and Shore Acres flooded. You know, those houses are back for sale on the market for um, the same price that people bought them three years ago or even less. And in a market that is up over 80%, that doesn't make sense unless something is wrong. And if you're living in one of those homes that is at uh, um, entry level, you know, and you, these homes can flood. So just keep that in mind. That is super important to take note of. All right, now another thing that you may not necessarily love that comes along with being in a subtropical climate are the bugs and wildlife. And this is just something you're going to have to deal with when you live here. We have alligators, we have reptiles, we have mosquitoes, we have no seams, <laughs> we have lizards. Um, there are all types of birds here. There are spiders, there are all kinds, y'all, there are even rats. So we'll get into all that here shortly. Um, now, let me take a step back. This is not like, Jumanji. Welcome to Jumanji. Where uh, you've got to be concerned that you're going to be carried away by any of these things, but you should be aware, okay? Now, I'll say this. Mosquitoes are not a problem for me here. They have not been an issue the entire time we lived here. As a matter of fact, it was worse where I lived in Michigan, hands down. They're not even close, okay? So I was told for years, the mosquitoes in Florida are so bad. Well, we live by the Gulf of Mexico. We get a great coastal breeze. I just have not experienced that. I haven't experienced that in, in downtown St. Pete. I haven't experienced it at my friend's house in St. Pete. Now, I know there are areas that are gonna be more prone to that than others. You know, uh, wet-lying, low-lying areas um, in the shade, those areas can definitely do that. The bigger thing that you need to be aware of, well, technically it's much, much smaller, is the no -see no seams are literally what I just said. You, you, they're very difficult to see. There are tiny little bugs and they bite and they hurt. Those are the ones that I am far more concerned with than the mosquitoes. And um, it, it's not common that I get bit by a no seam, but the pain is <laughs> much, much more significant. So it's something to be aware of. Snakes, uh, they, can, they can be there. I've only seen a few snakes the entire time we lived here, but I live in a subtropic climate. There are There is no doubt if someone released one of their pets 
out into the wild, that thing is living and it's living strong, right? So there is something to keep in mind. Um, you know, we have reptiles. There are lizards all over the place. Um, those, those are pretty friendly. We have geckos too. They, they eat bugs and mosquitoes. You want those guys. Um, I have had very few spiders in my home that I've ever seen. Saw way more of those when I lived up north. Don't see nearly as many now, but they're here. So that is something to be aware of. Um, again, alligators. I've never seen an alligator trouncing around my neighborhood. You should expect to see them in large open bodies of fresh water. There is no doubt about that. If you go over to the Gulf of Mexico, we have things like stingrays and jellyfish and there are shark in there. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Would it stop me from moving here? No, especially after living here for five and a half years. Like I don't even think about that stuff anymore. You're more likely to get struck by lightning twice than you ever are to get bit by a shark. So that just kind of takes it off the table. Alligators are exactly where I would expect them to be. And I don't go there. We don't go swimming in lakes. We don't go swimming in rivers. Those belong to the reptiles. They get to keep them. Y'all get your thing. We've got beautiful pools here. We've got a gorgeous bay and we've got one amazing Gulf of Mexico. Those are the places that we, <laughs> We like to go swim so keep that in perspective also so when it comes to these critters they're here now the one thing that i know that no one wants to talk about is the fact that there are areas where rats are more common than than others now is it a um pandemic you know is it something you need to be overly concerned about no but here's what you need to be aware of right we're right above sea level there is no place for mice and rats to hide they can't go underground so they'll be running around in the neighborhoods if you do not clean up your trash, if you have stuff just randomly laying all over your yard all the time, they've got to have a place to go, right? And if other people have pets and you don't, they could drive them in your neighborhood. And again, this isn't a problem, but it is something to be aware of. This is a different type of living because you're in a coastal region. Remember, St. Petersburg is in Pinellas County, which is a peninsula on a peninsula in the ocean. So just keep that in mind. This is something else you're going to have to deal with. Um, and again, has it been overwhelming? Is it something I'm concerned of? No, but I'm here to tell you the truth today, not hide it. And while we're on this topic, I wanna invite you down to the comments section below. If you're local, share your insights with people who are considering moving to the area. Please do it in a respectful manner. There are people who jump on here and just have nothing better to do than complain. Y'all, if you're watching this video and you go in the comments and you see all that, just know that most of that is chatter. The keyboard cowboys are absolutely some of the worst. Trolls are something special, however, there are people who are gonna go down there and give you valuable insights. Definitely worth exploring, so keep that in mind. Also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me and the team. All of my contact information is listed down below there as well. There's even a link to my calendar so you can schedule a time that is most convenient for you. I would love to have a conversation. If you're genuinely considering making a move to the area, we can definitely help solidify some of these areas for you. Make sure that you get the correct community for your ideal lifestyle. The next thing that you're probably not gonna love about living in St. Pete is red tide. Now, red tide is an algae bloom. It can be harmful to wildlife and to us at times also. Um, in, in our time here, we have not experienced it every single summer. However, it is a natural, forming algae bloom that already is in the Gulf of Mexico and it can be stimulated by things like nitrogen getting in the water, aka fertilizer, right? Trash, those types of things, whatever we dump into the water. Um, you know, if there's an accident in the ocean or in the bay, that can stimulate it also. There's a lot of things that can, can um, lead to red tide growing. But the thing about red tide that is not fun is, first of all, it kills the marine life. It literally suffocates them. And dead fish start to float up it's, listen y'all, this is not a pretty scene that I'm painting right now, but I need to be real with you. You need to understand that there is a cost to live in paradise. This is this is the associated cost here. Um, and it can be really bad in different areas. And it really kind of follows, um, you know, how the currents are moving. But if it gets into the bay, it can be pretty gnarly to the tune of killing millions of pounds of fish. So just keep that in mind. This is not fun. It can be very difficult on your respiratory system. Um, if it gets really severe, so Sometimes it's not a big deal at all. Other times it's really bad. It discolors the water, makes it like this kind of reddish 
reddish brown. It, it's not pretty, it smells terrible, and it is something that when it comes, it is not fun to deal with. So just keep that in perspective. Um, most of the time since the, since we've been here, it's happened three of, of the five years. Well, technically we weren't moved here. So three of the six years we've explored the area in total. And two of them, it was pretty rough. Uh, the third year wasn't that big of a deal. Most of it stayed on the Gulf side itself and didn't really make it into the bay. But this is something you do need to be aware of. Red tide is not fun. It smells terrible and it kills wildlife. Next is the rising cost of living. And I'm gonna be honest with you right away, just so you know, the cost of living here in St. Petersburg, Florida is higher than the national average. So that is something you're gonna to wanna to take in consideration before making the move here. And over the last five years, we've seen a huge increase in housing prices because of the demand. So many people have moved to the greater Tampa Bay area and St. Petersburg. And with the limited supply that we have, this has made it very difficult for home shoppers. You stack Back on top of that, the fact that you live in a coastal region that is very attractive, the you know 230 plus days of sunshine, you know all of the reasons why people want to live here, and it puts a lot of pressure on the housing system. Um, there weren't a ton of condos and apartment building high rises, you know, five years ago. But the great news is today there are a lot of projects being built, which is awesome. Some of them are in the affordable range; others I would consider luxury. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about what it actually costs to purchase a home here. In the last 30 days, the average home that sold was a three bedroom, two bath, 1,585 square foot home, and it sold for over $661,000. And let me be real with y'all, that 1,585 square foot home was probably somewhere in the range of 60 to 90 years of age. <laughs> so our housing here is also not new. So if you're thinking that you're gonna move to St. Pete, get one of these beautiful new homes with 11 foot ceilings, 2,000 square feet plus, four bedrooms, a garage, that is most likely not in the cards at that price point. What you're going to be looking for is what we refer to as scrape and builds, where they've tore down one of these old bungalows or these old craftsman style home and then built a new property from the ground up. Those homes are starting well over a million dollars, especially in areas that people really want to live. So just keep that in mind. Now the average condo that sold was a two bedroom, two bath, just over 1,200 square feet, and those sell just shy of $442,000. But just like the single family homes, it is not difficult to spend over a million dollars on a condominium. If you look at the project down at 400 Central, those condos are starting at over $2 million. So this is something to keep in mind when you come to the area. If you're looking for condo living and you wanna be right on the bay, you wanna have the marina you know, it within view, you wanna be able to see St. Pete Pier, these things definitely have a cost associated with them, so be mindful. If you want to move a little bit further west towards the middle of the county, that's when prices tend to go down um, and give you a little bit more flexibility. Just know on average, the housing is older. You do have access to newer construction, but it is going to come at a cost. Next up, it's the one that no one ever wants to talk about is St. Petersburg, Florida safe. Now, before I get into this, I gotta tell you guys something. I have to give a caveat here. I hold a professional real estate license, which means I am not allowed to tell you whether an area is safe or it isn't. However, I can show you exactly where to look. I can provide the resources for you to dig into it and I can share my personal perspective, okay? How I have moved about the city, how I feel about the city in terms of what I've done with my family. I'm not telling you it's safe. I'm not telling you it isn't. I will say this, St. Petersburg does have its fair share of crime. That is something to take note of. But just like most metro areas, there are specific pockets where it is way worse. And those are areas I wouldn't consider living, but that's me personally. And there are areas that rank really, really high and that are well above the national average in terms of safety. So keep that in mind. So when you hear things like, is St. Petersburg safe? That is a very large question. 260,000 residents. There are neighborhoods that are gonna be amazing and there are neighborhoods that you better believe I would not ever consider moving my family to, but that is me personally. The question then becomes for you, what is the right fit? What is the right move? Do you wanna live in areas that offer more affordability, right? Or cheap living, if you will, but 
have higher insurance rates and higher crime rates? Or do you wanna live in neighborhoods that rank really high in terms of safety nationally? And you can look up the statistics, they'll show you that. The crime map we use is live, it's awesome. It shows you not only whether there is crime in the area, but what type of crime there is. Because oftentimes, we get a little bit laser focused and we also don't understand that where we live actually has things going on with it too. There are very few places in the country that are completely um, separated from any crime that happens. So I just want you to be aware of it. And if it feels like I'm being a little bit general here and a little bit vague, I'm doing my best to share with you, okay? There are areas in the Northeast quadrant of the, of the city that rank really, really high in terms of safety. Go check the map. There are areas as you move far, farther south of downtown that definitely um, deserve expiration and, and doing more diligence. That is what I can tell you. That's the reality of it. That is public record, not Juan's opinion. <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. I just want you to be aware of that. And when you're looking at areas, if you're looking at real estate and go, man, that's a prop, that is a really good deal. That's way less than anything else I've seen. Usually that's for a reason, y'all. Use your, your BS meter, if you will, because if you smell something up, typically that's the case. It smells like bull. So be mindful. If you need a guide, if you need a resource, reach out to me and the team here. We're here to be a resource. Again, I can't tell you whether something's safe or not, but I can absolutely show you where to go look for that information. We're gonna link all of that information down in the description below of this video. So do yourself a favor and check that out if you're concerned. Also, my recommendation is if you're considering moving to any area, go explore it. Go live in it for a weekend, a week, check it out, see how it makes you feel. Here's what I know, I grew up in the Metro Detroit area. I lived in Detroit as a child. We were robbed three times in a six month period. Trust me, that is ridiculous. I don't know a single person in the greater Tampa Bay area who's had to deal with something like that. Do I think that that's happened to someone? Absolutely. Is it nearly as prevalent as it was in Detroit? No, so to me, I look at this area and I go, this is not a big deal, but other people moving from other areas may, may look at, at St. Petersburg and the greater Tampa Bay area and think it's not for them. And that is okay. That is your choice. You get to make those decisions, but do it in a qualified manner. Check out the resources that are available to you. Trust me, they won't disappoint. They're very helpful. Now, with all that being said, for some of you, that stuff is gonna be insurmountable. For others, that is not a big deal. You're used to way worse or you're unfazed, just like I was. And to be quite honest with you, my experience here, St. Petersburg is one of the best hidden gems in all of the country. It is a vibe. I love spending time. We regularly go down to St. Pete for date night. We take the kids, go down to the farmer's market, go to the pier, walk Central Avenue. We love St. Pete. It is a vibe and we are so so grateful that we live in this area. But what I know is it's not for everyone and that is okay. So just be aware of that. But would it change my mind, the things we talked about today? Would, would that deter me personally from living in St. Petersburg? The answer is no, 100%. Kate and I would love to buy a condo as a second home. We only live 12 miles away and I would consider buying a condo in St. Pete because I love the vibe. I would love to wake up, walk downstairs, go get a coffee, walk the streets, go be on the bay, go be on the marina. It is is so much fun y'all and I think you'll have a blast down there too. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and the team. I hope you got a tremendous amount of value out of today's video. YouTube is gonna put two more videos up here that it absolutely thinks you're going to love. And until next time, as always, go out and live that Tampa life.